Right, so I've got a plasma cutter to give away for the Dream Weld Shop random orders that I'm uh, pulling out here from WeldMetalsOnline.com. Everybody so far has answered their phone. Will this guy, which I'm not going to name, unless he picks up the phone, answer his phone? We're, we're going we're gonna to do it this way. Can we get four for four? Let's see. Is this Zachary? It is. Hey, this is Justin with TFS. How you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm all right. You know, I hate to bug you on a Saturday, but I've got a 50 amp plasma cutter from Prime Weld with your name on it. And a $100, coach, $100 Weld Coach gift card. That's what I was going to say. Damn, I ran out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you watching and uh, your purchase from Weld Metals. I appreciate that, too. It's a Saturday. I'm, my head's not even here. I'm just trying to get my video done. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. I'll, uh, I'll have this uh, on its way probably next week. Sounds good. Well, awesome, man. Well, have a good one. You as well. All right. Bye. Bye. Four for four. Hell yes. I'm happy. Everybody answered their phone on the random order giveaways, but we still have the grand prize to give away. And the way you enter into that one is by heading over to weldmetalsonline.com. Every five bucks you spend on your order gets you an entry into it. There's only like 800 and some odd entries. So you really got a good chance to get in on this action and uh, do it. So I highly recommend getting over there. And of course, everything from now until Halloween, October 31st, 11.59 p.m., uh, is on 10% off right now. So get your butt over to weldmetalsonline.com, get your butt entered into this thing, and hopefully I'll be calling you on the live stream on November 4th. Let's get to today's video. A bunch of you guys asked for Viper related content, and I could use the tax write off. So here it is, my 2014 Viper GTS. It is, in fact, my dream car. And it's actually the reason that I became a welder. It kind of accidentally made me one. <laughs> When I was younger, the first generation Viper RT10 really had my interest. Poster on the wall, the whole thing, and while at the time, you know, the wildly styled Italian pasta rockets were, you know, definitely piqued my interest, the Viper just held it for some reason. I absolutely obsessed over this car. Like, I read so many books on it. I bought the Hot Wheels. I had friggin', you know, like every car and driver that had like the smallest, tiniest picture of a Viper that like, might have mentioned it. I begged my mom to get it for me so I could memorize all the specs on it. I mean, you name it, I knew everything about this car. By the time the second generation GTS hit the market, I was determined that this is my car. This is my dream car. I'm going to have it no matter what. You're not going to stop me. But the problem is, is I came from a broken home and $72,000 back in 1996 is about the same as having $140,000 in today's money. The hopes of my parents would somehow become super rich and just buy me one of these just because I existed was pretty much gone out the window at that point had to find something else that would probably work. So the next best thing I can think of to get close to the Viper was to just become a mechanic and work my way up to working on them. So when I was 19 years old, I got a job at my local Dodge dealership here in Vegas, and I started out as basically a lube jockey. Got to change the oil on a few of them, things like that. But I eventually worked into light line repairs and then ultimately Viper Tech trainee. Now I got to play around with a few of the Vipers that were in the valley and all the rest of that good stuff and it was really awesome. I mean my love for them grew even more and more. Things couldn't be better. Except for when I was 19 I was interested in doing 19 year old things and not necessarily having a career based on working on Dodge Vipers all day long so I ended up getting fired ultimately. But in May of 2002 the 998 recall was issued on second generation Vipers 1999 and... It was discovered that under heavy and aggressive driving conditions, certain areas of the chassis would end up breaking or cracking or whatever the case is, and they all pretty much needed to be fixed. Some of these repairs involved welding, and some of these repairs involved drilling a bunch of holes and sticking in a gusset with a bunch of pop rivets. You could probably guess that me being low on the totem pole meant that I was down there underneath this car squeezing its friggin' rivet gun. Now, I was young and dumb when I was 19, and of course I was pretty cocky. So squeezing rivets into a car, the third time I had to do it for that day, I was starting to get a little bit annoyed with it. My arms felt like jello. 
I wanted to do everything on this car. And of course, I had worked my way up to getting to this level. I should be able to do that. I'm entitled to do that and nothing's gonna stop me, right? So at lunchtime, I went back to the body shop and I talked to the guy who did the welding on the recall because that's where he worked at. Now, he must have seen something in me that day or whatever the case is, because instead of telling me just to get back to work or whatever the case is, when I said, hey, show me how to weld real quick, I'm going to do the next recall, he actually did show me. But he did put me in my place, laughed it off or whatever the case is, like, yeah, whatever, kid. But hey, you know what? I'll take a minute and I'll show you something. So we go to the back where there's an old Miller MIG machine just kind of chilling and all dusty in the corner or whatever the case is. And I remember he hands me a lens, just the lens itself, a two by four darkened piece of tinted glass. And he's like, yeah, hold this in front of your eyes and there's the MIG gun, you know, just pull the trigger, aim it on there and wiggle it around a little bit. And there you go, you just welded. I did exactly what he told me to do. Put the lens in front of my eyes, looked through that, pulled the trigger and Everything went slow motion. Like I see the sparks flying, I see the, the metal is melting, I can just feel the heat coming off of this, and this was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I instantaneously fell in love with it. So much to the point where I didn't make any more money that day because I was in the back farting around with the welder or whatever the case is, but the next day I went to Walmart and I bought a $200 Campbell house filled flux cord welding machine, the cheapest thing I can find. And anywhere I can find metal to stick together, I was out in all of my spare time sticking metal together. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't really know what the difference between aluminum and steel and stainless and all the rest of that stuff, but whatever, I was out there just melting whatever I could together. Now, of course, not knowing how to do any of this stuff and, of course, wanting to get into the automotive performance fabrication scene at the time or whatever the case is, I figured I'd probably better learn how to actually do some of this stuff. So I took a few classes and back in those days, you could also go around a shop and push a broom and volunteer your time for an exchange for learning something. So I frequented a few shops, tried to clean up, learn as much as I could, but most of it was just in the books, the magazines, you know, the everything that I could that gave me welding knowledge. Because back then there wasn't YouTube or it definitely wasn't this YouTube that it is today. Now fast forward a couple of decades, I dedicated my career to learning the automotive and performance fabrication and welding industry. I've built up a pretty decent reputation as being a car builder, got to touch a lot of really awesome projects, and I even opened up my own welding supply store. But in 2021, I was sponsoring a welding competition for high schoolers down in Texas. And usually when I travel for stuff like this, I usually give myself a couple of extra days while I'm down there to do things like go to welding businesses or check out some welding supply stores, even go to schools and maybe give some speeches to some kids or whatever the case is about how the welding career is a great place to be and you know share my story with everybody else and whatnot. But this time I had absolutely nothing on that schedule. So I had two extra days down in Texas with nothing to do. So naturally when I'm traveling, I hop on Marketplace and look for really fun stuff on the internet to spend my money on. And this particular time I found a couple of Vipers at a couple of dealerships up in Dallas. Called ahead to make sure that they were there and I figured, well, it's not too far away. I'll just go over there and fart around and look at one and hey, maybe I'll finally get my dream car. So after doing my usual thing of kicking the tires and, you know, looking at it, driving it, check the oil, all the rest of that nonsense, talk Viper and supercars and all that junk, I threw them a BS offer. And when you know it, they said yes. So I immediately call my wife and say, hey, I'm going to get this Viper. And she immediately replies with no. Well, I wasn't going to let my dream car evade me that quickly. So I bought the car anyway. Actually, my wife and I came to an agreement and whatnot, and she said, well, you know what? You gotta be back here in town in two days because we have meetings that you have to be in. And I said, you know what? I'm on my way. So on that particular day, it's about 5.30 in Dallas area. I left the dealership and headed right back to Vegas. But that was three years ago. Why is it only now starting to surface and, you know, since I've had it this whole time? Well, it's actually because this channel somehow ended up becoming a welding channel instead of the automotive performance fabrication type content that I originally wanted to create. It just never really fit in. So if we're talking about welding for months on end and like, oh, look, I got a Viper, it just, it doesn't fit. But since I've been able to create Weld Coach, both the company or the school and the YouTube channel by itself, I can shift all of my content over to there and finally come back to bringing back the stuff that I ultimately originally wanted to do. 
And if the story of about how my dream car accidentally made me a welder, which ultimately made me enough money to eventually buy my dream car, interests you, well, then I appreciate you sticking around and listening to it. And if it inspires you, I really hope that one day you can tell me a similar story.